Hi everyone, welcome back to the Stilio Apps channel. My name is Ruth and in this video we are going to talk about Google Analytics and Shopify. Now I hope it is clear to any of you watching why you need to connect Google Analytics into your Shopify store. You need to collect any kind of information about your customers, what they're doing, your visitors, cart abandonment, purchases, you want to collect this data into Google both so that you can learn about what your customers are doing, where your weak and strong points are, and also so that you can create remarketing audiences and actually use that to market to them on Google Ads. For all of these reasons, Google Analytics is incredibly important for anyone starting with Shopify. It is a free tool that is very, very powerful. So, you know, not using it would be uh, pretty stupid of you, to be honest. So we don't want to be stupid. We want to add Google Analytics to our Shopify store. Now, the big thing is Google recently changed how their analytics tracking works. And if you are following any kind of old guide showing you how to add Google Analytics into your store, it might not work and it might be a little frustrating. So today I will show you how to add Google Analytics into your Shopify store in two ways. The first would be the classic one, the one that Shopify supports. The second would be for the new Google Analytics code, which you would have to play around with your Shopify code a little bit to add that. To be honest, if you're starting out with Shopify, I would recommend going with the classic Google Analytics code. This change is very new, so I am pretty certain that Shopify will very soon add support for the new Google Analytics tracking method. So there's no point playing around with your theme code to add the new analytics method. However, if you for some reason want to do that, if let's say there is something that you can't do with the classic one that you want to do with the new one, I'll show you how. So let's get started. Now, let me jump into my computer and show you exactly how we do that. All right, so I'm jumping into my Google Analytics dashboard and in order to create a new asset, I'm gonna have to go into my admin. Now, if you have never used Google Analytics before, all you have to do is navigate to analytics.google.com and log in with your Google account that you wanna use for these analytics. I already have an account, so I'm just gonna create a new asset inside that. I'll show you how. I'm going to admin. And in here, I can actually see in this dropdown all of my different accounts. And what I wanna do is create a new account. And it might be a little confusing because it's not a new Google Analytics account. Each one of these is an account. And in each account, you can create different properties and apps that you track. Now, generally the way I do it is I create an account per project. So if I have a few different stores, I will create a different account for each one. But then if inside the project, I have different assets that I'm following up on, I will create a property for each one of these assets. So let's create an account. I'm gonna call this account Stilio Test. And I'm gonna leave everything checked and then click next. Now in the property setup section, I need to give that a name as well. And again, this is the property inside the account. I'm gonna call it Stilio Test and Universal because this is going to be the account where we create the traditional old universal tracking that Google lets us use. Now, the important thing here, you can change your time zone and the currency in which you'll build, but we really want to show advanced options, and this is very important. You have the option here to create a universal analytics property. This is a part of the earlier version of Google Analytics and supports web measurements. So you can only do web measurements here. You can't do app measurements or anything like that. But if your goal is Shopify, is just your store, then this is what Shopify supports. I'm gonna turn it on, give our store URL here. Then last thing that is very important to do is actually click create a universal analytics property only. If you don't click that, then you're not gonna get the code, the UA code that Shopify expects to get. So I'm gonna click next, and then I'm gonna select my industry. It doesn't really matter, honestly. Let's just do computer and electronics. I'm gonna select small, and I'm gonna skip these questions and click create. Of course, I have to accept the Google terms and conditions. 
And voila, the moment that the property was created, as you can see, we are directed into the tracking code page where I can copy my tracking ID. And here we have the UA number that Shopify expects to see. This is what Shopify supports. So what I'm gonna do is click copy and go into my Shopify admin to actually paste it into Shopify. I'm gonna go into my online store, preferences, and again, if you've had Shopify stores in the past, you will recognize that as what you need to do to copy and paste your Google Analytics code. I'm going to go into Google Analytics and paste the code. I'll click save. And now let's log into the store. And in Google Analytics, let's go home to actually see if we're showing up. There we go. One active user right now, the live tracking is working, which means we've installed the code properly. This is the traditional way. This is the universal analytics that Shopify still supports. You don't need to edit the code. You don't need to do anything. Just copy the code from Google as you did in the past. The only difference here is on Google side, it's not the default anymore. You actually need to kind of click a few checkboxes to really reach that. So just make sure if you want the UA code that Shopify supports that you follow along as this guide shows. Now let's move on to actually add the other way, the G tag that Google now supports the new one into Shopify. First thing I'm gonna do is just delete the Google Analytics code from Shopify so we know that any tracking we get is from the new code that we add. Now I'm gonna go back into my analytics I'm gonna go into admin and in admin under the Stilio test account, create a new property. I'm gonna call this property Stilio test new because we're using the new method, very clear. Now in here, as you can see, by the way, I'm not creating an account setting like we did in the first time we did that because it's already creating the property in a new account, in a, an existing account and not in a new one. I can click show advanced options, but I don't really need to do anything. I can create a universal analytics property as long as I leave this checkbox checked, but I don't need to just keep that and click next. Now for the industry, I'm gonna select the same industry that I did before small and click create. As you can see, things look different. We no longer have the uh, tracking code that we did before. We have the data streams. And the idea here by Google side is that we can actually create a few different data streams that all fall into the same property. This is the same property. It might be an app. It might be a website. We want to throw everything in the same place. Now, if this is something you want to do with your Shopify store, then it's a really good idea to use this method. Just because Shopify doesn't support it out of the box doesn't mean that you can't. All you have to do is edit the theme settings, edit your actual theme files. It can be a little bit dangerous, but we're gonna do it now together. We're gonna choose web because this is a website. We're gonna add the URL of our website and the name, which doesn't really matter. Create stream. And now we have some options to actually uh, tag, to actually add this code into your website. You can use existing on-page tag, and this is in case you already have some tags installed in your store, you can add it by using any of these guides, but we are actually going to use a new on-page tag. We don't have an existing Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics installed in our store. If you have Google Tag Manager, then go ahead and use that, but we are installing that from scratch on the Shopify theme. So I'm gonna go ahead and select global site tag, G tag. As you can see here, I need to add it to the head of every web page. Shopify makes that very easy to do. Let's go ahead into our Shopify admin and going back to the online store, I am going to edit my active theme. Now a word of caution here, if you are using an active store, you have active customers making purchases, viewing products, etc. You do not want to edit the live theme especially if this is the first time you do that. What I would recommend doing is actually duplicating the theme, editing the code on the duplicated theme, and then after you tested it and everything is okay, publishing it. But because this is just a test store, I can afford to edit the code directly. I'm gonna click edit code. And now what I'm going to do is find my head. It can be confusing with all of these files, but like I said, Shopify makes it very easy to do. All you have to do is go to theme liquid, and click Command or Control F to open the search box. Click slash head. 
and you find the closure of the head tag. So we want to paste the script inside the head tag, but at the end of that. So if you didn't add this slash, you would find the opening of the head tag. Well, you would find a lot of different head stuff, but head tag is here. And if we add the slash, we recognize that this is the end of the tag. So what I'm gonna do is just add a space here. I'm gonna go back to Google Analytics, copy this code, paste it here, click save, and that's pretty much it. But we want to make sure that this actually works. So I'm gonna go ahead, go into home. No users here right now, as you can see. And I'm just gonna click view and enter the store, just like I did before. Now, this one, from what I've seen, takes a few more seconds than the traditional universal tag, and that's fine. I'm just gonna give it some time, and it's gonna show us all the data that we need. Okay, so as you can see, in the last 30 minutes, I have one user. If I go into real time, I will see myself in the, here it is, I am on the store, it shows me the location, it shows me everything. So this tag works. We basically added the new Google Analytics tag into our store and it was very easy. Yeah, it is a little bit dangerous because you're editing the code, but if you do it safely, then there shouldn't be any issues. Whatever method you use, honestly, both would work fine. Uh, it's really about, are you feeling confident editing the Shopify theme files or not? Do you want to just use the options that Shopify give you that are safer, they prevent you from making any kind of mistakes that might ruin your store and your theme. It's really up to you. So this video is not to tell you which one is better and which one you should do, it's just to give you both options. Whichever you feel more comfortable using, use that, that's totally fine. And Shopify will probably give us the option to add the G tag without editing the code soon enough. There's no reason not to. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, just drop them down below. We will be in the comment section answering everything. And if you liked the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you never miss another video from us. Is there any more information about Shopify and e-commerce that you want, something that you're missing? Let us know in the comments. We love hearing ideas from you to help guide us to what content you actually want to see. I will see you in the next video. Until then, have a great day. Bye.